Forest fires are becoming more frequent globally. In its latest report, the IPCC claims this increase is likely due to climate change and the hazardous conditions it creates. While there are various causes, including slash and burn agriculture and lightning strikes, 2024 saw record-breaking temperatures and droughts caused by low rainfall resulting in bigger, longer fires. Australia is among the world's most wildfire-prone regions in the world as an isolated continent with many endemic species. The loss of valuable plants and wildlife is a very real concern. We investigate the problem of forest fires and assess their impact. January 2025, a huge fire breaks out in the U.S. near Los Angeles. It spread from the forest to a high-class residential area, home to many celebrities. Nearly 16,000 buildings were destroyed, and at least 29 people have died. In February, a wildfire also broke out in Japan's Tohoku region. It burned for over a month, scorching an area nearly 10 times the country's annual average. Forest fires are on the rise globally. The World Resources Institute, an American think tank, reported that in 2024, 13.5 million hectares of forest were destroyed by fire five times the amount recorded in 2001. The UN Environment Program claims that if climate change continues at its current rate, by 2030, we will see up to a 14% increase in forest fires, and by 2100, 57%. One area most affected by this is Australia. In 2019, several forest fires broke out in the east of the country simultaneously, continuing for more than six months. Known as the Black Summer, fires burned the equivalent of over half the area of Japan, around 190,000 square kilometers of forest. The flames devastated local wildlife. In the past, Kangaroo Island was a well-known habitat for koalas. Nearly all of the forest on the island's western side was burned, claiming the lives of roughly 90% of the 50,000 koalas that live there. The main cause is believed to be extreme drought caused by unusual weather. Over 70% of Australia is arid, seeing less than 500 millimeters of annual rainfall. Even so, 2019 was especially dry. It had the lowest annual rainfall since 1900, less than 300 millimeters. Plus, the average temperature was 1.5 degrees Celsius higher than normal also a record. It was the hottest, driest year ever recorded. We asked the specialists about recent measures against forest fires. The bushfire emergency services tried to reduce that load of dry vegetation. Now it's spreading out for a long period over the year. Now so much of the country is on fire at the same time, those volunteers are struggling to move from place to place. Another unexpected cause of the fire's rapid spread were eucalyptus trees endemic to Australia. In order to adapt to the arid climate, these trees produce highly flammable oil. As such, if a fire breaks out, they can also cause the surrounding forests to burn more easily. Forests normally absorb CO2, but once they start burning, they instead begin producing it. In 2020, fires caused by the Black Summer produce the highest amount of CO2 from wildfires recorded in the last 20 years. 
So how do we restore that CO2 absorbing ability lost to fires? A Japanese researcher has come up with a unique method. Professor Igashira Yasuyuki is from Tokyo University of Technology. For nearly 30 years, Professor Igashira has continued to research Australia with the aim of reducing CO2 emissions. Replanting the burned forests alone will not be enough to absorb all the CO2 released by the fires. Entirely new forests must also be planted in order to redress the balance. Professor Igashida is focusing on the arid regions that cover two-thirds of the country. There's certainly plenty of spare land, but the dryness poses a challenge for forestation. Just beneath the arid surface is the hard pan, a layer that water cannot pass through. Because of this, even if it rains, the water does not drain into the ground and simply evaporates. Professor Igashira and his team break through the hard pan, taking care to avoid damaging the surrounding area. Digging about five meters deep, they plant some endemic Australian species. Then they make an embankment to channel and retain the valuable rainfall. 17 years since the project began, Professor Igashira's research is producing results. Among the number of endemic species planted, one type of eucalyptus tree continued to thrive. ユーカリプタスカマルドレンシスっていうやつがあって、で、こいつが非常に良く育ったっていうことですね。20年間ちゃんと枯れずにいるっていうこととか、あるいはここ数年非常に雨が限られていてですね、干ばつの時期があったん